So solving radical equations is actually pretty straightforward and, and pretty much the same steps every single time. You just have to learn those steps. So let's just start by solving a typical equation. So what we see here is we have uh, 2x cubed equals 16, and I need to get x cubed by itself. So the first thing I do is divide by 2. So now we have x cubed equals 8. Now to get rid of the cubed, we have to cube root it. So we could write it like that, or we could have written it to the 1 3rd power also. Either way, it means the same thing. The cube root and the cubed cancel, so we get x equals, and then the cube root of 8 is 2. So that would be our answer. We're going to do the same thing with radical equations. Radical is just that term for the root um, symbol. And so what we do is we get the radical by itself. So I first start by adding 4 to the other side, so that now it's the cubed root of x equals 4. And now to get rid of the cubed root, I cube both sides. The cubed root and the cube cancel, so then x equals, and then the 4 to the third power is 64. Now, you always want to check your answers because there are going to be times where your answer is not actually going to work if you went back to check. It's not that you did your math wrong, it's just that we have these answers that sometimes don't work. So I have 64, so you don't actually have to write anything down, just think about it. The cube root of 64 is 4, and then 4 minus 4 is 0. So this one actually does work out, um, so we can keep our answer. Now this looks a little bit stranger. Remember radicals, um, the same thing, you know, this would be a radical if I rewrote it. So what I want to do is I want to get this all by itself. So anytime you have an exponent, you want to get that by itself. So we get rid of the 2 first. So we have x to the 3 halves equals 250 divided by 2 would be 125. And then in order to um, get rid of the exponent, I'm going to raise it to the 2 thirds power. So then my, my exponents cancel out, so I just have x equals. And now, just like before, we do the root first, so the cube root of 125 is 5. And now I'll be left with 5 squared, which is 25. And then if you go in and check, the um, if I were to plug in 25 here, the square root of 25 is 5. 5 cubed is 125 times 2 is 1, 250. So that one also works out. So now we keep on going, and of course there's little things that can change, but otherwise for the most part the steps are the same. So first I get rid of the 5, I'll subtract 5 from both sides. Now that negative is still there, so it's a negative 4th root of x equals negative 5. I still want to get rid of the negative, that's still a nuisance, so I divide everything by negative 1. So the 4th root of x equals a positive 5. And now to get rid of the 4th root, I raise it to the 4th power. 4th root and the 4 cancel, so then x equals, and the 5 to the 4th root I think is 625. And if you check that, you'll find that it works out. So once again, I want to get rid of the 3 in front, so I divide by 3. x to the 4 thirds then is 81. And then I raise it to the 3 fourths power to get rid of the exponent. So then those all cancel out. x equals the fourth root of 81 is 3, and then 3 cubed is 27. All right, now the more complicated ones. And yes, they do get more complicated. You'll see now that I have more than just an x inside the root. And so what I want to do again is I want to get the root by itself. So I'm going to move the 2 over. So I have the square root of 4x minus 7 equals 3. And now this, since there is no number there, this is a square root, so I want to square both sides. So the square root and the square cancel. 4x minus 7 equals 9. And now I just go ahead and solve. So I'm going to add 7. So 4x equals 16. Divide by 4. x equals 4. Now we definitely want to check. This is where sometimes it can get a little um, sketchy. So I want to check the 4. So I go up here, 4 times 4 is 16, 16 minus 7 is 9, square root of 9 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, so it works out this time. Oh boy, now we have to work with what if you have more than one root um, like we do here. Well, we're going to work on it the same exact way we did before. I'm going to get the square root by itself. You just pick one to get by itself. And typically you want to get the most complicated one by itself first. So that means I'm going to move the two square roots of x to the other side by adding. So now I have the square root of 3x plus 2 equals 2 square roots of x. And then I have to get rid of the square root. Now the square root, I'm going to get rid of it by squaring it. 
but you have to make sure that when you do this other side, you're squaring everything, not just the root, but we're also square, squaring the two, the two and the root. So I go ahead, square it and square cancel. So then 3x plus 2 equals, and then over here, the squared, I can distribute the squared because it's multiplying here. So 2 squared is 4, and the square root of x, the square root and squared cancel, so I just get an x. And then I solve, subtract 3x from both sides. So then 2 equals x. Now I really do want to check this. I might even write it out this time. If I plug in 2, I've got 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 2, that will be the square root of 8 minus two square roots, and remember I'm plugging in two, equals zero. Now this looks a little bit complicated. Remember the square root of eight though has a four in it, so that's four times two, and the square root of four is two. So I've got two square roots of two minus two square roots of two equals zero. So this does work out, this would be my answer. All right, let's try this one. So I'm gonna add the three square roots of two x to the other side. So now I have the square root of 4x plus 28 equals 3 square roots of 2x. And then I'll square both sides. Make sure you square the whole thing again. So we have 4x plus 28 because the square root and the squared cancel equals 3 squared is 9. And then the square root and squared cancel, so I get times 2x. So this will be 4x plus 28 equals 18x. Get rid of my 4x. So 28 equals 14x, divide by 14, and 2 equals x. So once again, we'll want to double check that 2 equals x is a solution. So I plug in 2, I get um, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 28 is 36, square root of 36 is 6. And then plugging in the next one, 2 times 2 is 4, the square root of 4 is 2, 2 times 3 is 6. And 6 minus 6 does equal 0, so that one works out also. Okay, so a little vocab for you. Extraneous solution. This is when you get an answer, but it's not actually an answer. It doesn't actually work. And you're going to find that it actually does happen in these problems. I know I've been telling you check and make sure it works, but this time it actually is going to happen. And here's the scary part as I look at this. And I guess, I don't know, it's just it's a little bit more work than what we're used to. So you'll see that our square root is already by itself, so I'm ready to square both sides. So I square this side. And then when I go over here, I have to square this side. But you need to be careful because x minus 4 squared, you can't distribute the squared this time. Because of that minus sign, I cannot distribute the squared. What I have to do is I have to remember that x minus 4 squared means x minus 4 times x minus 4. This is a FOIL problem or use a box to solve this. So we go x minus 4, x minus 4, we get x squared, minus 4x, minus 4x, and then 16. So we have x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals, and then on the other side, the square root and the square root cancel, 2x. So then I move the 2x over, and now I'm back to chapter 5, where I've got a quadratic I've got to solve. And so you can use a box to double bubble, or you just double bubble, whatever you're comfortable with. And let's see, we've got x and x, and to get 16, I believe we're going to go with 8 and 2, both negative. So it gives me negative 2x, negative 8x. So then I have x minus 8 times x minus 2 equals 0. And I take each one and set it equal to 0. So then x equals 8 and x equals 2. Now let's check them both. So if x equals 8, I'm going to put 8 here. 8 minus 4 is 4, and 8 times 2 is 16, the square root of 16 is 4. That one worked out. All right, now what if I take and put 2 in? So I put 2 in there. Now 2 minus 4 is negative 2, and 2 times 2 is 4, the square root of 4 is 2, and you'll see that negative 2 equals 2 is not a true answer, not a solution. And so x equals 2 is an extraneous solution. My only answer should be x equals 8. All right, so another one. Uh, let me see how many we have. Just this last one, and then we're done. So again, I'm going to get rid of the square root by squaring both sides. But when you square the side with the x plus 2, you have to take x plus 2 times itself. So we're going to take x plus 2 times x plus 2. 
we get x squared and 2x and 2x and 4. So on the left, we're going to have x squared plus 4x plus 4. On the right, the square root and squared cancel, so we get 2x plus 28. Move everything to one side. We'll get x squared plus 2x minus 24 equals 0. And now we can use a box to double bubble this. So we've got x squared and negative 24, x and x. I'm going to go with 6 and 4, positive 6, negative 4. So now we have x plus 6 and x minus 4 equals 0. So we get x equals negative 6 and a positive 4. Now if I try out the positive 4, I get 4 plus 2 is 6, that's good. And then if I plug in 4 here, I get four, 2 times 4, that's 8, plus 28, that's 36. Square root of 36 is 6. So 4 works, we're happy with that. Alright, let's try the negative 6. So we plug in negative 6 in both spots, negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. Now negative 6 times 2 is negative 12, and negative 12 plus 28 is 16, and the square root of 16 is 4. So negative 4 equals 4 is not true, so negative 6 is not a solution, just the 4 is.